Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to this month's edition of Tarden Dane's Indie Read Along. So today I'm going to be talking to you about two books. I'm going to be talking to you about Bad Sandwich by Ollie Jacobs, and then I'm going to be talking to you about where's it gone? And then I'm going to be talking to you about The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. So I guess I'll start with the Ollie Jacobs review, which I've already filmed, and I'll cut to that now. Alright, well I'm going to assume that I don't need to do my introduction here, so we'll just get on with the review of Bad Sandwich by Ollie Jacobs. I'm going to try and read the blurb, but um, the blurb is in that. I don't know if I hold it closer, maybe. Yeah, you can just about see that. So there's a bit of a design cock up there, but um, we'll go for it anyway. I'm going to try and read this spiral on the front as well. I think it says insane. A mindfuck, indescribable, very lyrical, confusinating, and incomprehensible. Word lunacy, a bit weird. And on the back it says, where to even begin? Born of an alcoholic fever dream, Bad Sandwiches, on the surface, a simple tale of one man and his quest for Zaz after consuming the titular snack. And then it goes insane. Wise dogs, banana cowboys, psychotic puppets, and much, much more. You don't so much read Bad Sandwich as survive it. Good luck and God help you. I'm truly, truly sorry. Ollie Jacobs. So, um, I guess here, as you can see, the first thing to mention is like the interesting way it's laid out. It's almost similar, I guess, to stuff like Illuminae. This, that's what the booktube people will <laughs> understand. But, um... It's, I kind of look at it more as like concrete poetry, so um, it, it is almost like poetry, or it's like a long prose poem, and uh, again, concrete poetry is the type of poetry where you have like, you know, the poem, the actual visual form of the poem reinforces what the poem itself is, so for example, it might say down, and then the word down goes D-O-W-N and reads top to bottom instead of left to right different fonts and all that kind of stuff in here and um, it's very experimental but I actually really enjoyed it now I, I saw a review of this on Goodreads where someone gave it one star and just called it nonsense or something like that and it's not nonsense that's the thing it's like you can follow a story in it it reminds me of William S Burroughs almost and some of the weirder stuff that he did like there's clearly a story in it, and it does almost have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But at the same time, it's just hard to tell really what's going on because, again, it's like an alcoholic fever dream. And it does, it does, it does feel like a fever dream. I'm going to read some of it out loud to you so you can get a feel for like the writing style and all this and all that. Let's see. I'm trying to find a good place to start. Let's start here. Of course, we all think that the world of sleep will save us from the monsters underneath our bedrooms in the black of the night. Truly, this is our place to escape and run with pace, free like the winged creatures above our beyonds. It is a fallacy, of course, but a fallacy we preach aloud to young and old in order to maintain the illusion within. The man had recovered from his living nightmare of Mr. Stanky and retreat to the safe haven of his boudoir, peace wrapped around him such like the duvet that lay dainty upon the divan. Exhaustion took his head and hashtag sang a song to lull him away to this realm of fantasia. Hark to rest for forthcoming eventuals. With this the man took heed and changed from working cloth to a stripped down boxer and darkened the room to plunge into deep sleep. Mr. Stanky was vanquished, and the quest from Jellyman rang shrill, but was easy enough to push. Away from the remainder of what was left of this fateful equinox, breathe deep, the man will, and shall, take in the oxygen that floats around you and drift away down the river of reverie. Think not of the taxes that paid in kind, and think more of what your hearts desire. Cry out, ah, the assistant of Jellyman. Never before had an impact nestled so firm in the man's mind. He imagined her as you can in such a state, her rogue lips puckered and offering to him and him alone, her power suit vaguely hinting at the eroticism that lurks, full breast and firm nip and a lowering suggestion that made the man sweat in the confines of the material he was encased in. I won't go on. It's hard to sort of tell where to dip in and where to dip out of with this because that in itself was pretty... I think worked all right as a little self-contained excerpt, but equally it all, does all link together and like there are references to earlier on in it and even references to later, I guess, you know? I mean, this is the kind of book that will, or very rarely, I would say, will very rarely kind of get like 
mainstream publication because it's weird, it's experimental. And I really, I really like weird experimental stuff, so I did enjoy this. Actually, I did notice my, my main bugbear with this, funnily enough, was uh, apostrophes in things like it's and haven't or whatever, where they were included where they shouldn't be and weren't included where they should be. But other than that, I actually really enjoyed this book. I read it in a day. I only give it a four out of five, uh, bearing in mind it's an indie book as well. It'll never... You'll, you just wouldn't see this in Waterstones or whatever because it's too weird. But if you like weird stuff, you're going to like this book. All right. I kept that fairly succinct, I think. Okay. And now this version of me is back. And I'm going to talk about The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. So we will start with the blurb as always. From the heart of Burma's exotic Ruby land comes an emotional thriller as three lives are thrown together by the desperate choices they make to survive in a country gripped by civil war. When the British ambassador's son finds himself trapped between sides fighting a bitter conflict, his best hope of salvation is to trust a local ruby smuggler. For her, the ambassador's son is a ticket out of poverty. For Than, an ambitious military officer, exploiting those caught up in the war offers opportunity for promotion and distinction. But as all three learn to their costs, in this enigmatic and savage country, everyone has a price. The Road to Rangoon is a tale of ambition, salvation and hope that confirms Lucy Crookshanks as a master storyteller. So, this is published by Heron Books, which I believe are an imprint of Quercus. Uh, yes, I was right with that. So, technically this isn't an indie release. I know Lucy has like an agent and that kind of stuff. This is her second book as well. Uh, I actually previously reviewed one of hers for a uh, an earlier indie read-along, so I will link to that below. And basically, that's why uh, one of the reasons why I've gone for two books this month is I want to go... Ollie Jacobs is definitely indie. Lucy, you could argue that she's not indie, but she is a booktuber. So there's that. So... Like her previous book, this is set in... Well, I think her previous book might have been set in Vietnam, actually. I can't remember now. But this is set in Burma in the 1980s. Uh, it, it's kind of like... Um, I would call it a mixture between sort of political espionage thriller uh, with a bit of military thrown in, but then also historical fiction and literary fiction all kind of come together in it as well. Now, I really liked the plot. I thought the plot was very well fleshed out. I wasn't too keen on the characters, but the plot and the setting were both very well done. I think that's what Lucy does really well in her writing is that she she creates this sense of place, you know? You feel like you're really there. And not only do you feel like you're really in in uh, Burma, which is now called, you know, Myanmar, but you feel like you're in Burma in the 1980s as well, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I did flag a few bits throughout that I was going to talk about. I don't know how much there is. Oh, uh, so we ha here we have uh, one of the characters is reading uh, John Le Carre, the little drummer girl. I've never read any Le Carre, but I would like to get to him. We have a quote here that, I don't know, it made me chuckle for the casual sexism here, but obviously it's written by a woman set in, in Burma in the 80s. I imagine casual sexism was very much a thing in Burma in the 80s. Uh, so we have, do you know what happens to women, boy? They're slow and weak and they don't think straight. They get themselves killed or captured and they run their mouths at the whiff of danger. The generals can't risk loose lips in the ranks, so they'll send you to the front and let the enemy kill you before you have the chance to give anything away. So they're in jail, and uh, I'm going to read you this exchange. So, Min stared at his father, his teeth clamped around the pencil, an expression uncertain, and then he glanced above Than's shoulder again. What are they here for? Than shrugged. Robbing, brawling, gossiping. Does it matter? Don't waste your time being interested in crooks. Interest leads to pity. Pity leads to weakness. Weakness leads to defeat. Defeat leads to the dark side. May have added that last little bit there, but we do have some great lines of dialogue here. Like, power is finite. It's not suitable for sharing. I'm going to read this paragraph. Uh, it's just a random one, really, but I think it gives you a good idea of, you know, the way that this sense of time and place is, is created. So, Michael pressed himself harder against the tree, holding his breath so his face didn't twitch. Insane was a hellhole, squalid and infamous. Every soul in Burma lived in terror of its threat. It was where the Tatmadaw sent the murderers and rapists, and where the very worst bandits and thieves were locked away. But it was also a trap, their rotting place for dissidents. It was where men who'd done nothing but dream were hidden, until their fingers were prized from their hopes for the future, ideas abandoned down the drains in tears and vomit and washed away into Irrawaddy streams. I also wonder here how much of this is like... I guess Lucy's own thoughts, and I, I think she's been travelling and whatnot as well. I'll read this out to you. Michael took a long, hard breath. He had always been different in England, always distant. 
But Thuser had found the words that he'd struggled for. It was not being lonely, it was just being lost. That was why he had clung so tight to Burma when he came here. It was the chance for a purpose so much richer than was plotted before him. Of London and office blocks and living for paychecks and Fridays and piss-ups. He understood now though, and he felt lighter also. The last few days had unclogged his mind. Perspective, perhaps, his father would have called it. He wouldn't go back there. Not now. It wouldn't matter. Whatever came next, he'd make a change. And I think a lot of us can relate to that life of, you know, living for the Fridays and the piss-ups. Uh, actually, there's a great Gary Vaynerchuk quote, though, where he goes, like, if you're, if you're living for the weekend, your shit is broken. Which sounds about right. But yeah, all in all, I think this is the kind of book you're going to enjoy if you're interested in Burma, if you're interested in that kind of, that period in history as well. Uh, and also, again, just the military side of things. I was impressed by how military this was, in a way, you know. Um, yeah, it was fine. I, I don't think it's going to stick with me for a long period of time. But it was very, you know, it was well written, very well edited, well presented, it was professional quality release, you know. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on my blog, I think, and then rounded it up to 4 to, to Goodreads. That is it. That's the, the road to Rangoon. So there we have it. I have now covered off Bad Sandwich by Ollie Jacobs and The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. I can show you. I have them here. So next next month, I'm going to be reading... I'm going for two again, because why not? I'm going to be picking up We Are Lucifer by Amy McLean, another fellow YouTuber. And Osric Fingerbone and the Spring of Jacks by Michael Israel Jarvis. This is actually the second book of two as well, this, this Osric Fingerbone series. Um, go on, I'll quickly read you the blurb of both of them as well, just to get you in the mood, uh, if you'd like to... Join, join in with either of them. So, we'll start with We Are Lucifer by Amy McLean. In a peaceful thicket of Hampstead Heath, a recently bequeathed house awaits a new family. For Amber Quigley, however, there is no babe in the cradle. She is incomplete without a child to nest with in her ancestral home. Rocked by the perils of her tormented mind, Amber promises to herself that she will find a child of her own to love. Whatever it takes, no matter how daunting, she is determined to fill her rocking arms with her own baby. As she plots to find the family she craves, Amber vows to fight against any obstacles that barricade her from her child, no matter how many lives she may destroy along the way. Hmm, interesting. And I didn't actually check the blurb before buying it, I just bought it on the strength of... I don't know, Amy seems like she'd write a decent book. And here we have Osric Fingerbone and the Spring of Jacks by Michael Israel Jarvis. So we got Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. London, 1865. Mayhem blossoms throughout the city as Osric struggles to correct the bloody sins of his past. His apprentice Edward Sachs has become difficult to guide. The boy murderer is 13 years old, grieving his sister's betrayal and is full of anger, a dangerous combination. Eleanor, out for vengeance, makes her plans, but so too does a figure from the deeps of the Undercity. London is about to learn a new name as smoke rises and blood runs from the rooftops. Very cool. But anyway, on that note, that is it for this instalment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.